So I can't really say welcome back to my channel because I've been gone for so long and you may ask yourself why not just do a normal makeup tutorial and I can tell you always been more than just makeup everyone is but I actually genuinely I really love my hobbies otherwise they wouldn't be my actual hobbies um, I'm really interested in geology and within the past three years I have definitely cultivated a love of aviation I look like a little six-year-old every time that a plane is in the sky or you know I'm driving on a highway and in certain cities that I'm in the airport super close to where I am and I just I love when you see the plane you're just driving your little car and the planes just going overhead of you and you're just like oh my god and then I'm like somebody take the wheel I just want to watch the plane land I could watch planes land and take off all day long I have watched YouTube videos of planes taking off and landing I have watched simulation videos I have watched like you know can a passenger land a plane videos anything to do with aviation and I recently took a course with MIT to kind of like understand not only how aviation works but getting your PPL or your private pilot's license and I did score an 81 percent out of you know a 70 is passing <laughs> not this this is nothing to brag about but I want to get my private pilot's license I just don't have enough money to do so so I really wanted to synergize my love of makeup and my love of aviation and I've always wanted to do something like this I just am such a chronic procrastinator and then finally I just I need I need something I need an outlet for my passion so I have married the two together and hence make up up and away and this is going to be my weekly series where I either cover you know unfortunate plane crashes or some sort of aviation aspect that I find enjoying um, and also every proceed that I get from doing these videos I'm going to put it towards getting my PPL and it can be kind of expensive so um, I'm not made of money and I want this to kind of fuel that fund that I I it's it's a goal of to get my private pilot's license um, I know that uh, commercial flying and um, working for like a large airline is not in the cards for me because um, you know I'm not a spring chicken and I also have a small daughter I have to think about so you know um, you guys should guess my age in the comments if you don't already know but anyway I hope you enjoy this series please keep watching and also I am not a pilot I am not an aerodynamically savvy person I didn't have physics so if I do get something wrong kindly don't mansplain me but please kindly correct me in the comments and please enjoy I wanted to talk about Boeing's 737 MAX 8 because I feel like it's the most relevant to today with travel coming back because of, you know, the pandemic. Also, I was recently on a 737 MAX 8 on a Southwest flight and I realized it and I was like, oh my God, this is a MAX 8, isn't it? And the flight attendant was like, yeah, you know, and you could tell he was kind of like hesitant to talk about it. And I was like, oh no, like I was excited to be on one because it was my second one. I had been on one prior to them grounding in, what was it, March, 2019. And um, I was actually kind of like excited, but I mean, in terms of like comfort level, there's essentially like no difference in, in the plane as a passenger. So it really, you know, for us passengers, it really makes no difference. I do know that several airlines are giving passengers the option to change their flight to a different plane if they don't want to fly the MAX 8. I find I find that really interesting because if you aren't afraid to fly on a MAX 8 and you want to switch things around without incurring any change fees or anything like that you could totally be like well I'm not comfortable flying the max 8 so I need to change I need to rebook I need to change my flight so that that could possibly work if um, you know if there aren't any loopholes in turn from the airlines that say you know oh no like if you've flown on a max 8 before <laughs> then you can't switch it prior to the grounding I did have a flight from Cleveland Ohio to Dallas, Texas, and I know it was a max eight because 
it was like blue on the interior, which is essentially a four passenger. The only detail that I really noticed besides the most recent one that I was on, um, the engines were a lot quieter. In terms of difference riding in the plane, I really couldn't tell other than like certain things look newer, it's a little bit cleaner. With Boeing's grounding, these planes have been grounded since March 2019. Let's get into it. it all begins is in 2010, Airbus announced their you know new fleet. They're adding to their Airbus A320 family, and they've re-engined with the a320 neo which stands for new engine option and these entered into service in 2016 airbus we're talking about no keep up with the competition boeing announces their competitive aircraft the 737 max and this is the it encompasses seven, eight, nine, and 10. The eight is a part of their fourth generation. They also too have a plan. They wanna re-engine with leaf engines. So as of December, 2019, something like 15,737 MAX eights have been ordered. 10,000 of them have been delivered. So remember these statistics later on. Rounded, the production has halted. This makes the Airbus A320 family, you know, the highest sold aircraft. What happened? to ground 10,000 freshly delivered airplanes. And well, two crashes occurred. The Lion Air Flight 610, which took off from Jakarta on October 29th, 2018. Take off and 13 minutes, 13, like, imagine. I know when I am on a plane, I am so nervous until I hear, oh, you know, the ding and then they tell the flight attendants that we've reached 10,000 feet and you are free to commence your laptop usage or whatever this crash happened 13 minutes after takeoff and i just i just i really honestly like i really empathize with the cabin crew the pilots just just everyone in the airplane, how terrifying this must have been. 13 minutes after they take off, this plane crashes in the Java Sea and it kills all 189 passengers and crew. This is Lion Air's deadliest crash in their 18 year history. During the search and rescue, even one of the rescue team, they had a fatality. In their initial investigation, they discovered that there was flight control issues. In their initial investigation, they learned that the previous flight before this left cabin crew and the passengers terrified because nearly the same thing happened. There were no other instrument failures reported. Also, I'm going to do my eyeliner off camera because I can't do it on the camera because I just, I it's just ugly, okay? I know the liner's not impressive. Initial reports, real, they come to determine that there's no sensor issues with the first crash here. And essentially, they put out like a memo saying, oh, you know, this could happen with the MCAS. What is the MCAS system, you may ask? It is the manu maneuver. It is the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system. Or should I just name it that? To understand this function, you first have to realize Boeing is using these leap engines due to their positioning on the plane. They have to be higher. And in doing so, in positioning them higher, it creates the nose of the plane to pitch upwards, which ultimately, if anyone knows anything about aviation, if you're pitched too high, certain altitudes, you stall. In a sense, it's kind of like an anti-stalling system. So the system is basically like correcting itself and it's like, oh, we're gonna get, we're gonna go into a stall, guys. We're going into a stall. So let's pitch the nose down. What's happening is the MCAS is pitching the nose down towards the ground and these pilots, it said, they have like, it's like four seconds for that to happen and they have like 10 seconds to correct, to correct this. Essentially, none of these pilots knew. Basically, when Boeing comes out with this new plane, everybody, all the, all the airlines are like, we don't have to retrain all of our pilots. It's, it's expensive, it, it takes some time and money. So we want a plane that can they can just get in and go. That's where the error occurs because 
pilots have no idea how to, they didn't even know what MCAS was. So they're flying these planes thinking that the 737 MAX 8 is the exact same as the 737 8 series or 7 series or whatever series. With each different plane that they're on, I think it's called typewriting, they have to become type righted on that righted on that type of plane to fly it they're used to flying these 737s their whole career and then they get into this new max 8 they think it's the exact same so after this crash the faa and boeing issue advisories for everyone operating the max series to be aware of these issues however not all of them were aware of this design flaw and it leads to another crash it comes to light that as early as 2015 and engineers speculated that this very same thing could happen. Imagine had Boeing not rushed to keep up with their competitor. So Ethiopian flight 304 takes off from Ethiopia to Nairobi, Kenya on March 10th, 2019. Flight 304 crashes within only six minutes after takeoff. And then this is Ethiopian's deadliest crash to date. Actually, they're known for being one of the safest airlines. Just rotated and you're you're airborne now. And then for it to just crash, you know, six minutes later, it's just not a lot of time. On this flight, I did watch just talking about, again, MCAS is a system created by Boeing and it's actually on one of their other aircrafts. It's the 767 Hanker. So the pitch of the nose is like as the angle of attack and an MCAS corrects that when it thinks that the nose is pitched up too high you know which is trying to basically stop it from stalling you're taking off so obviously like the nose is going to pitch upwards it's just that MCAS thinks that it's pitched too high up and so the nose is you know just diving down trying to get out of what it's thinking is a stall and it corrects the angle of attack or also known as the AOA. It electronically adjusts the horizontal stabilizer and trim tab, sending it into a nosedive. However, unlike the tanker, this MCAS system on the MAX, the pilots are putting in the controls and the plane is not responding. So a part of this memo that Boeing sent out to pilots were instructed to perform a recovery procedure to undo the pitch of the nose caused by MCAS. And that's for if, if the event, in the likely event that the nose is pitching down and we've lost control of the airplane, this is what you guys are supposed to do. Which in the case of the Ethiopian flight, I read that the plane would descend rapidly into, you know, start plummeting and then it would they would like regain control over the plane over the course of like, you know, five seconds on, five seconds off, or maybe it was like five and 10. But either way, it's, you know, they're like nose diving and then they're like, oh no, we've recovered. And then the plane would plummet again. And then they're like, oh no, we recovered. And I guess on the last attempt was when they just, they just couldn't recover it again. So they give these, you know, pilots the this procedure to do, and and it's determined that this procedure would not have stopped the Ethiopian flight crash. So you're giving them like, oh, here's what you do if you run into this issue, and then it really just doesn't even work. I expected more out of Boeing, and someone made a very great point that it's like Boeing is doing this because they're here to make money, sure, a profit, but really it's just greed because you're rushing something to get it out there on the market because you wanna keep up with your competitors. That's great, but we really, like, we've, it's essentially like a monopoly and this is what happens. Something dangerous is what happens after you're rushing it and you're just, not equipping the pilots and then they also like blamed the pilots and initially like the findings i think it was from the first flight the first crash um they blamed the pilots so and in a, in a clandestine meeting somebody was recording they 
I have Boeing saying that, you know, oh, it's a pilot error. The pilots have like, you know, four seconds to, to for it to happen, to realize it's happening and like 10 seconds to correct it. And the pilots are like, that's not enough time. And I saw a simulation, alarms are going off and imagine you have literally like no time to correct what's happening, let alone understand what's happening to do the necessary checklist. I'm gonna pop my lashes on off camera. Having known all of this information and how Boeing really rushed things in attempts to keep up with their competitors, uh, would you get on a Max 8? Do you feel like Boeing and the FAA have, do they suffice in their attempts to remedy this situation? Tell me, leave me, leave it in the comments. Flying is such a safe means of transportation and we need to keep it that way. I feel like this look, it needs like some lip gloss or something. I did one of the most basic looks. This is what I've been looking every, like every time I do my makeup. I just go for the most neutral basic look I could possibly come up with. So for my initial video, I wanted to show you guys my everyday, not everyday, when I put on makeup, makeup look. If you guys liked today's episode, which it was my first one, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time on Makeup Up and Away. And hopefully this takes off.